Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon Geeky Sparkles is sitting this video out. We're gonna talk about Hasbro. Uh, Hasbro, the mega, mega conglomerate toy company that uh, got itself in the entertainment back in the late 2000s, and it looks like they might Icarus themselves. Just a little bit. We're gonna talk about this because uh, since the uh, unfortunate death of uh, Brian Goldner uh, a year or two ago, Hasbro is is having second thoughts about becoming an entertainment company. They might want to stick to toys instead of you know stick to sports. Uh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about how this affects uh, not just their toy lines, but Dungeons and Dragons, because the uh, Dungeons and Dragons movie that's coming out is actually under E1, which was this uh, entertainment company they bought. But according to Bloomberg, uh, Hasbro might decide to just uh, nope out of producing its own entertainment and just kind of license that stuff out like they used to back in the day. I mean, Hasbro, of course, worked with uh, Marvel Productions and worked with Griffin Bacall to produce the animated shows of, you know, Transformers, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony that became uh, kind of the foundation of, of uh, I guess, the Hasbro mythos. You know, they went from just making toys to making toys that had storylines and then the storylines became movies. Uh, well, loosely, loosely based on the toy lines if you look at Transformers. But yeah, this, this sounds like Hasbro might be in some real trouble. We're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Over 274, almost 275,000 subs. If you could hit the subscribe button, it helps us out. Um, that's how YouTube likes it. They like it when they see subscribers. So please subscribe. And if you want to continue to help us out, uh, we stealthily last night launched Crimson Ren Volume 1 on Indiegogo. Uh, this is our first new Shadowbinders comic in like eight years. And uh, the art is provided by the amazingly talented Jose Garcia. It's a story by Geeky and myself. This is the origin of Crimson Ren. So we're going we're gonna to take a step back and then we're going to spring forward with new Shadowbinders. Um, and I'm actually currently working on that, working out the logistics for that. But in the meantime, uh, you can pick up a copy of Crimson Wren and you can learn where Crimson Wren and the True North airship came from. And, uh, hopefully we have many, many more books. Uh, the support's been amazing. We really didn't make a, a huge deal out of it. We mentioned it in some videos, but in like 10 hours, we're at like $13,000. So thank you guys uh, so much. I guess you want some more some more uh, uh, Clownfish Studios content. So anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this. This is coming from Bloomberg. Hasbro considers sale or restructuring of entertainment assets. The world's largest toy company spent $4 billion to move into Hollywood. Now it's having second thoughts. In August 2019, Hasbro Inc. announced it was paying about $4 billion to acquire E1, the Canadian media company best known for Peppa Pig and PJ Masks. Now I think it was probably worth it for Peppa Pig and PJ Masks, because I know the toys sell very, very well. Peppa Pig is apparently getting her own theme park, or I think she's gonna be a Legoland or something. I don't know what's going on. But Peppa Pig's a huge deal. It probably was worth $4 billion just to get Peppa Pig. But Brian Goldner was uh, very keen on getting into Hollywood. He's the one who pushed for the Transformers movies to get made. And, uh, you know, they've really been trying to rebrand themselves as an entertainment company, as a Hollywood studio that just happens to manufacture toys. And I think they're going to Icarus themselves. I think they're going to get to a little too close to the sun. And I think they're um, straying out of their lane by expanding into producing movies. They talk about this, that really their stuff has been hit or miss. I mean, the first couple Transformers movies made a lot of money at the box office until the general public realized the movies were crap, <laughs> and then they stopped going to them. And it's a real shame, too, because I actually, uh, as critical as I was of the Bayformers movies, I actually love Bumblebee. It's like, guys, if you'd given us Bumblebee first, I wouldn't have been so critical, but now I'm looking at the rise of the beast and it looks like it's more Bayformers crap. So I'm, I'm really not interested. Anyway, um, they said at the time, Brian Goldner, RIP, was on a mission to transform the toy company that makes Transformers and G.I. Joe into a global entertainment studio that makes movies and TV shows. Again, G.I. Joe has been very miss. Snake Eyes was a box office bomb. Um, the first two G.I. Joe movies were not great. Uh, they didn't do very well. I think the second one was better, but they didn't do very well at the box office either. 
All you got to do is call up Jerry Bruckheimer. Give us a 1980s G.I. Joe movie that sticks close to the comics. That's all you got to do. Anyway, uh, Goldner had previously held talks to buy DreamWorks Animation and Lionsgate Entertainment, but had been unable to seal the deal. Uh, E1 began as a Canadian music distributor. And um, yeah, they own stakes in several production companies, including Steven Spielberg's Amblin, produces dozens of films and TV shows such as Yellow Jackets. It also distributes movies to foreign territories. In the two and a half years since the deal closed, almost everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. A global pandemic halted production and closed movie theaters. Goldner died at the age of just 58. Yeah, he had cancer. He didn't tell anybody he had cancer. He just was like, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a vacation. And then he just, he never came back. Um, an activist investor acquired a stake in Hasbro and started agitating for some changes. So let's let's walk that back a little bit. That activist investor was Alta Fox. They wanted Wizards of the Coast to become its own company. They wanted to spin it off into its own company, arguing that Hasbro was holding them back. Um, you know, and I think it was more about wanting Wizards of the Coast to have more autonomy to probably go woker, in my personal opinion, given the way things are there. But uh, Hasbro fended off fended off uh, Alta Fox and Wizards of the Coast is, is part of the company. But, you know, E1 is who is creating, distributing the D&D movie, the Honor Among Thieves movie, which looks OK. It looks OK. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, it looks a hell of a lot better than the 2000s Dungeons and Dragons movie. If you guys have seen the trailer, trailers actually got quite a few views. But um, I think it's going to be pretty jokey. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's going to be 5e the movie. I, I can almost guarantee you that. Personally, the only live action version of Dungeons and Dragons I want to see is a, a, a full movie based on that Brazilian car commercial where they had a perfect, perfect cast for the uh, 1980s animated series. Um, it was awesome. It was very, very awesome. I think they pulled those videos down, but uh, absolutely perfect casting. I would love to see a movie of that. It's not going to happen. Instead, we're getting uh, Chris Pine in 5e, the movie. But uh, who knows? It might be okay. Anyway, um, yeah. Anyway, we don't know how this movie is actually going to do. And again, everything coming from Hasbro, uh, the entertainment side of things, has been hit or miss. And they compare it to Mattel. Mattel's actually been making uh, strategic alliances and letting other people foot the bill. Hasbro wants to do everything themselves and and uh, you know it seems like it's it's very hit or miss, right? They said that here's here's what's going to happen. They said they're weighing two options according to several people familiar with its plans can take the existing staff and redirect it to make branded entertainment and shut down work on projects like Yellow Jackets and Designated Survivor or can sell everything it doesn't want. Already sold the music company, which owned Death Row Records, for $385 million. They own Death Row Records? I didn't know that. Here's what Hasbro has to say. Entertainment is a core foundation of Hasbro as part of our strategic review process. We are always open to new and better ways to tell stories and bring people together through the power of play via our world-class family of brands. They said the retreat may have been inevitable. As soon as Goldner died, he was the one that was pushing for Hollywood deals. Goldner helped Hasbro overtake Mattel as the world's largest toy company by reviving My Little Pony, winning the Disney Princess license away from Mattel, and licensing licensing its toys for the hit Transformers movie franchise. Uh, after watching Paramount's huge success with Transformers, Goldner began to wonder why Hasbro couldn't do the job itself. That led to talks with DreamWorks and Lionsgate and eventually E1. Hasbro has taken a hands-on role in producing a Dungeons & Dragons movie at Paramount. And uh, yeah, you know, when you're seeing articles like this, though, <laughs> you know, popping up uh, every other week. And uh, we know exactly where Wizards of the Coast is right now. It's like, I don't have a lot of hope for the movie. I mean, the trailer looked decent, but uh, I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. When Hasbro looked to replace Goldner, it had a choice between Darren Throop, E1's longtime chief, or Eric Nyman, a Hasbro veteran, or Chris Cox, who ran the division that made Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. The board chose Cox. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't choose Cox? Uh, who was running the company's most successful division? Uh, Cox came from Microsoft. Uh, Cox is for making games or movies out of Hasbro's trove of toys. He's not as enamored of Hollywood as Goldner is or was. Uh, he wants to leverage the company's existing intellectual property instead of spending money to create a bunch of new properties. 
So yeah, this is interesting. Hasbro is just the latest in a long line of companies to arrive in Hollywood with big dreams only to realize that producing entertainment is both more expensive and less glamorous than most people realize. Uh, it's hard not to see this as another sign of increasing austerity in Hollywood. Hasbro thrived under Goldner by increasing its market share in sales, which worked when sales were booming, but investors are increasingly looking for profitability. Um, producing yellow jackets for Showtime was profitable, but it's a relatively low margin business. Yeah, people don't understand. The general public doesn't understand how corporations think a lot of times. They're like, why did they cancel whatever thing I liked? Because it was profitable. It had a large audience. The stuff seemed to be selling well. And in many cases, it might have been profitable, but it wasn't profitable enough. If you're going to sink $100 million dollars into one thing and you make a hundred a hundred and one million dollars or you can take that same 100 million dollars and make 300 million dollars where is your 100 million dollars better spent you know on the project that's going to make you 300 million dollars 200 million in profit versus the project that yeah it'll break even with you know a little bit of a profit but we're just treading water and when you're a corporation, I mean, that might be sustainable if you're a mom and pop company, right? You're like, oh, hey, we broke even. We made a little bit of profit. We can pay our employees. Things are good. We can keep doing what we like to do. But with a corporation, you've got to answer to shareholders and shareholders want more and more and more and more profit. So you're going to chase whatever is the most profitable thing. Uh, Mattel, its biggest rival, has tried to avoid the trap by not investing as much capital up front. This is why Mattel is working with like Netflix and all that to do the He-Man stuff. Mattel has mimicked Hasbro's push into film and TV, setting up more than a dozen projects, including a Barbie movie. But while Hasbro spent billions of dollars to buy an entertainment company, Mattel has chosen to invest less of its own money. I don't think Mattel had it to invest, to be honest. Uh, Mattel was not in very good shape a couple of years ago. It's hired a few people who are experts in entertainment and license, uh, license the TV and movie rights to its toys to the highest bidders. The market has rewarded Mattel more than Hasbro in the past couple of years, and this year in particular, though that is due in part to Mattel's potential sale. Yeah, so Mattel is, again, not in the best of shape right now, but it makes more sense to spend other people's money uh, if you get the same results. Or you might not have results that are as good, but you get to pocket more of that money. Again, this is what Hasbro did back in the day when they worked with Marvel and they worked with uh, Griffin Bacall was, you know, they let them take a lot of the risk and let them spend a lot of the money too, at least in Marvel's case, you know, and they got to reap the rewards with the toy sales. And they just, they're, they're going to Icarus themselves, you know? So this is uh, some pretty interesting stuff. I don't know how this, this is uh, going to affect Hasbro going forward. I, I'm having a feeling that they're going to wind up sticking the toys in games and uh, get out of trying to make their own movies. Again, I don't know what the D&D movie is gonna do. They're already talking, they're already talking uh, sequel and they haven't even gotten the first damn movie out the door yet, but um, you know, it does have quite a, bit of, uh, quite a bit of views on YouTube, the trailer. It looks kind of jokey, but you know, it might, be, it might be okay, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Check out Crimson Wren on Indiegogo, and I'll talk to you guys later.